A new meta-analysis offers insights into why people's LDL cholesterol increase when they go on a low-carb style diet. In today's show, we're going to talk about the meta-analysis involving 45 clinical trials, over 1,300 people finding that there's a strong association, particularly with people of low body mass index or low body fat percentage, and increases in LDL cholesterol when they restrict carbohydrate intake in their diet. And what's interesting about this uh, analysis is it offers insights into the heterogeneity or the differences in LDL cholesterol elevations when people like yourself reduce your carbohydrate intake. And it turns out that the less body fat you have, the more pronounced the LDL increases will be when you cut back on your carbohydrate intake. And this is important because many of your doctors, when you go to your family medicine doctor, your internal medicine doctor, get your annual physical, and you start to lose your body fat, waist circumference, you're feeling better, you're going on a low carb diet because you might have inflammatory issues, gastrointestinal issues, you want to lose belly fat, uh, you want to reduce your cardiovascular risk, you want to improve your cognitive performance, but your LDL cholesterol increases so your doctor freaks out. And it's important to understand the clinical heterogeneity or the differences in the susceptibility potentially in individuals who might be at risk for increasing their LDL cholesterol and why we shouldn't be so concerned about that, particularly if other cardiometabolic risk factors are improving, including lowering of waist circumference or visceral fat, increasing HDL cholesterol, reducing triglycerides, you know, if all of these different and improving obviously blood sugar homeostasis and metabolic health, if these things are trending in the right direction, should we be myopically concerned about an LDL increase, particularly in people who have low body fat percentage, uh, especially considering in the context that their other cardiometabolic risk factors are improving. So with that as a brief overview, let's dive into the study titled Increase LDL Cholesterol on a Low Carbohydrate Diet in Adults with Normal but Not High Body Weight, a meta-analysis. And, and so this was published January 17th, 2024 in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. As you can see, this graphical abstract showing the associations with low body mass index and an increase in LDL cholesterol when people restrict carbohydrate intake in their, in their diet. Uh, the inclusion criteria of this meta-analysis was clinical trials involving carbohydrate restriction less than 130 grams per day of total carbohydrate intake. And before we dive into the details, here's the conclusion. A substantial increase in LDL cholesterol is likely for individuals with low but not high body mass index with consumption of a low carbohydrate diet. Findings that may help guide individualized nutrition management of cardiovascular risk. As carbohydrate restriction tends to improve other lipid and non-lipid risk factors, the clinical significance of isolated LDL cholesterol elevation in this context warrants investigation. And so some points to notice here with figure 1A, as you can see here, baseline body mass index prior to restricting carbohydrates, as you can see here, there is a pronounced increase in LDL cholesterol levels. The range and the standard deviation here of, of a 95% confidence interval is between 20 milligrams per deciliter up to 60 milligrams per deciliter. The mean increase in LDL cholesterol in people who have a body mass index less than 25, which is a lot of you, especially if you've been exercising, eating low carb for some time, you can expect a marked increase in your LDL cholesterol. Shortly, we'll talk about why and why that might not be so concerning. But first, friends, as always, I want to thank you for being here. If you're enjoying the content, please hit that like button. Let me know what you think of this content if you're enjoying it in the comments section below. And last but not least, since we're into the new year, many of you are exercising, you're doing intermittent fasting, doing a lot of great things to improve your metabolic health. If you're not yet using the creatine containing electrolyte sticks by Myoscience, you're missing out on an easy way to improve your exercise economy and exercise performance. We've updated these electrolytes to feature the new Crea Pure Creatine Monohydrate, which is made in Germany, not in China. It's highly purified. It mixes really easily without a spoon or a fork. You can bring this in your gym bag while you're working out. You can have this before your exercise session or during your workouts to improve both your hydration because of the electrolytes as well as your exercise performance because you're getting 2.6 grams of the Crea Pure Creatine Monohydrate. There's a lemon lime flavor, an unflavored. We now have jar options in those two flavors as well as an orange flavor. So you can save using the code podcast over at myoscience.com. That URL is M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E dot -E com. So we're going to get back to the study, but first I want to share with you these labs from a client of mine to help you better understand how in individuals who eat a low-carb diet, 
why their LDL increases. And it really helps with the shuttling and the fuel partitioning in the body because as you're restricting your carbohydrate intake, there's an increased demand on fats or lipids for general metabolic purposes. And as part of that metabolic shift, you do see LDL cholesterol increase. And so here's a client of mine who actually did a fasted exercise session. And within 30 minutes of doing this exercise session, this individual went and got their routine blood work. And this individual uh, during this point in time had a body fat percentage of 16%. She's a female, very physically fit, very active, low carb for about four years up to this point. Okay, so let's look at her LDL cholesterol in the post-exercise window. It increased from her baseline, which is normally around 95 milligrams per deciliter, up to 468 milligrams per deciliter. So it increased almost five-fold, but her triglycerides, her fasting glucose, her hemoglobin A1C, her HDL cholesterol is also markedly elevated at 92 milligrams per deciliter. Her triglycerides are only 99 milligrams per deciliter. But these ratios were so high that the lab actually called after to make sure that everything is okay with this individual because this looks like some sort of hyperlipidemia, familial hyperlipidemia or some such. But if you look at her fasting levels, and I can share with you those labs later if you'd like, they are much lower and in normal physiologic range. So you might be wondering, why would exercise trigger such a pronounced increase in LDL cholesterol? Well, this individual, as I mentioned, is very lean, has been low carb for some time, and did a fasted exercise session involving some high intensity interval training, some weightlifting and so forth. And so during this exercise session, glycogen is going to be depleted from her liver and her skeletal muscles. So to fuel this exercise endeavor, her body will depend upon ketones and fatty acids for fuel. And that's why you do see in this particular context increases in total cholesterol as well as uh, LDL cholesterol. If I didn't mention, her total cholesterol is 574 milligrams per deciliter. And this person does not have familial hyperlipidemia or hypercholesterolemia. They are physically fit and, and they depend upon fats for fuel. And so I want you to keep that in mind as we go through the study because this is what we're seeing uh, in this analysis of over 30 1,379 subjects from 45 different randomized controlled trials. Okay, so the objective of this analysis is to evaluate the LDL cholesterol change in randomized controlled trials involving low carbohydrate diets with a focus on body mass index. 41 clinical trials were eligible, including four with two eligible arms, yielding a total of 45 low carb arms. These trials had a total of 1,379 participants with a mean intervention duration of 20 weeks. Some of these trials range from four weeks up to 104 weeks. Now, because the definition of a low carb diet varies among the different trials, the scientists say we used a physiologically based criterion of less than 130 grams per day. Their participants were over 18 years of age and had a body mass index between 18.5 and 24 point nine kilograms per meter squared. Now the intervention, the low carbohydrate diet with a net carbohydrate less than 130 grams per day. And the comparators in this analysis, again, the, the scientists wanted to see what differences there were in LDL cholesterol uh, changes in individuals based upon their body mass index, which we know is a really crude way to ascertain body weight. And so the different BMI categories were uh, underweight, less than 25, overweight between 25 and 29, and class one obesity between 30 and 35, and uh, class three obesity over 35%. And as you can see here from the images that I shared with you earlier, and again herein, you can start to see this association, this independent and inverse association with BMI and LDL cholesterol, suggesting that people with a low body mass index, when they go on a low carb diet, they are expected to see an increase in their LDL cholesterol. But as individuals are more in the obese or morbidly obese or even overweight category, the changes in LDL cholesterol are not, are not as pronounced, suggesting that these individuals might still not be relying upon uh, fats for fuel, might have a little bit more ability to utilize glucose or have some sort of insulin resistance related phenomena. But in lean people, due to their lower body fat percentage, you see the, the LDL increase when carbohydrates are restricted as a, as a compensatory mechanism to help with fuel distribution throughout the body. Okay, so the scientists write three electronic index Indexes were searched for studies between January 2003 and the 20th of December 2022. Two independent reviewers identified randomized control trials involving adults consuming less than 130 grams of carbohydrate.
carbohydrates per day, and also reporting body mass index and LDL cholesterol change or equivalent data. They write, BMI was strongly associated with LDL cholesterol changes, where saturated fat was weakly associated with that. In conclusion, our study demonstrates that much of the heterogeneity in LDL cholesterol changes to a low-carbohydrate diet is explained by body mass index and highlights a novel phenotype, the lean mass hyperresponder phenotype, susceptible to a large increase in this cardiovascular disease risk factor with carbohydrate restriction. These findings may allay concern for use of a low-carbohydrate diet with a common clinical indication treatment of obesity-related complications, including type 2 diabetes. Additional research will be needed to determine the clinical implications of LDL cholesterol increases with consumption of a low-carbohydrate diet by lean patients or other indications. They go on to say interest in low-carbohydrate diets has grown among not only people with high body mass index for treatment of obesity and type 2 diabetes, but also the general public for conditions not directly related to obesity, such as inflammatory bowel disease, mental health disorders, and neurologic diseases. However, adoption of a low-carbohydrate diet has been limited in part due to concern for elevations of LDL cholesterol, a cardiovascular disease risk factor. Some, but not all, clinical trials show marked LDL cholesterol elevation soon after initiation of a low-carbohydrate diet, and the source of this heterogeneity is poorly understood. Beyond conventionally recognized dietary factors, especially saturated fat and soluble fiber, net carbohydrate intake may also affect LDL cholesterol by impacting lipoprotein trafficking. With carbohydrate restriction, increased reliance on systemic triglyceride trafficking to meet energy demands and replenish adipocytes may cause an increase in hepatic, very low-density lipoprotein, also known as VLDL production, and sub subsequent increased peripheral turnover by lipoprotein lipase at the adipocytes in oxidative tissues with resulting increase in ApoB lineage lipoproteins. This phenomenon may be most evident in individuals with lower adiposity, giving rise to the phenotypic hypothesis of lean mass hyperresponders. All right, so I know there was a lot of jargon right there in this paper, but I just wanted to read it to you verbatim and then break it down right here. So what does this mean, These, this increase in apolipoprotein B lineages? Essentially because there's increased fat and triglyceride trafficking from the liver to the adipocytes and back and forth to the skeletal muscle and much more, there is going to be an increased synthesis of apolipoprotein protein B lipoproteins because your blood is water-based. And so to, in order to fuel fats throughout the bloodstream, you need these lipoprotein particles known as LDL cholesterol and VLDL cholesterol. So it's natural if you already have low body fat and you're pulling more fat from your adipocytes to have a concomitant increase in your VLDL and LDL, particularly LDL, over time when you start to restrict your carbohydrate intake in your diet if you have low body fat percentage. That's what that means. And so for individuals who are already metabolically healthy, have low body fat percentage, uh, it's quite actually normal as a mechanistic response to reducing carbohydrate intake to see an increase in LDL cholesterol. So we already have observed this with the lean mass hyperresponders. Dave Feldman and others have done a great job um, sort of adding more context and clarity to this concept. One paper that he has written about, uh, more details of which, and we reviewed this earlier, titled Elevated LDL Cholesterol with a Carbohydrate Restricted Diet Evidence for a Lean Mass Hyperresponder Phenotype. And essentially what you see is a substantial increase in LDL cholesterol for individuals who have a low uh, body mass index when they consume a low carbohydrate diet. And so this has been characterized in the literature. We now know this. And so here are the different forest plots uh, associating low body mass index with an increase in LDL cholesterol in individuals uh, after they go on a low carbohydrate diet based upon their body mass index. And so you can see this more strong association with individuals who are relatively lean or have a BMI under 25, you can see the pronounced increase in LDL cholesterol in these different forest plots. And as the BMI increases in these different clinical trials, what you see is the least significant increase in LDL cholesterol is observed in people who have a body or a BMI between 30 and 35. Um, you can see a slight increase in LDL cholesterol when uh, individuals who at baseline have a BMI between 25 and 30, uh, and they restrict their carbohydrate intake, you can see a slight increase in LDL cholesterol, but it's significantly more pronounced and inversely associated with BMI, the LDL cholesterol that is, in individuals who have a BMI under 25. 
So with that being said, let's read the conclusion and talk about the takeaways here. Should you be an individual who has a body mass index under 25 or you have a low body fat percentage and your LDL cholesterol has increased, you need to know this information when you work with your healthcare practitioner who is concerned about your LDL cholesterol. The primary finding of our meta-analysis may reassure healthcare providers and patients contemplating the use of a low-carbohydrate diet for the treatment of obesity-related diseases, including type 2 diabetes, as LDL cholesterol would not tend to increase despite high intakes of total and saturated fat. Conversely, LDL cholesterol can be expected to increase substantially among lean individuals adopting a low-carbohydrate diet for other reasons, such as epilepsy and other neurologic conditions, autoimmune diseases, type 1 diabetes, or personal preference. In these patients, LDL cholesterol should be monitored and the potential risks versus benefits of a low-carbohydrate diet weighed. However, the clinical significance of isolated LDL cholesterol elevation remains a topic of controversy. Changes in lipoprotein particle types with consumption of a low-carbohydrate diet may confer lower risk than otherwise suggested by a low-density lipoprotein cholesterol, due in part to a proportionate decrease in small LDL particles. That is the, the very small low-density lipoprotein particles just small side note, if you think about your vascular endothelium, the functional unit of your cardiovascular uh, vessels, if you think about hitting a tennis ball through a tennis net versus trying to hit a golf ball through a tennis net, obviously the smaller, denser particles will have a, a greater uh, susceptibility to potentially get inside the vascular endothelial tissue and become modified or oxidized. So that's the concern about the small LDL particles but you actually see when people go on a low carbohydrate diet, the proportionate increase in small LDL particles is not observed. You really see this in insulin resistance and people are consuming a lot of processed foods and sugars and things like that. So the scientists say, and reduction in other lipid risk factors such as, and this is observed when you restrict your carbohydrates, uh, you see a reduction in triglycerides, you see an increase in HDL cholesterol, a reduction in lipoprotein particle A or LP little a. And they say, and to improvements in non-lipid risk factors, such as postprandial hyperglycemia, insulin resistance, chronic inflammation, hypertension, visceral adiposity. These are all things that you see decrease when individuals decrease the carbohydrate intake in their diet. So the conclusion therein or the question, the clinical question we should be considering is, should we be so concerned about these transient increases in LDL cholesterol in light of the fact that we also see concomitant reductions in, as we just talked about, small dense LDL particles, hypertriglyceridemia, hyperlipidemia, waist circumference, inflammation, and all of that. So they say these beneficial effects of carbohydrate restriction may interact with or counterbalance any increase in total ApoB containing particles. Indeed, several cohort studies found that individuals with isolated and elevated LDL cholesterol compared with those who also had high triglycerides and low HDL cholesterol were at lower risk for coronary heart disease events and benefited less from statins. In any event, for people who benefit from a low carbohydrate diet but experience worrisome increases in LDL cholesterol, statin treatment could could be considered. My honest opinion is they probably put that in there so that mainstream medical doctors wouldn't be too irked by these findings, but I didn't write the paper. I was an, uh, a, a lead investigator. So that being said, if you're really worried about your LDL cholesterol, you can go to your doctor and get a statin, right? And I think Peter Atia would agree with you. I think other doctors may or may not agree with you. I think it's important to uh, consider your individual risk, your health history, your, your familial uh, cardiovascular history, your parents, your grandparents, you know, uh, and, and also look at your coronary artery calcium scores. There's a lot of different things, blood pressure, all of that. But I think this paper, and we're going to see more and more evidence about this. I want to thank Dave Feldman, an engineer who came into this field and has really opened up the eyes because he didn't have a bias uh, prior to this. You know, as an engineer, he was just looking at the data, looking at how uh, changes uh, in macronutrient composition would impact his LDL cholesterol and other people's LDL cholesterol and has really paved the way for this lean mass hyperresponder hypothesis and uh, helping us to better understand, as I mentioned, the heterogeneity or the diversity in LDL cholesterol changes in people's, based upon people's body fat percentage when they go on a low carb diet. So uh, hats off to Dave Feldman and David Ludwig for helping to put out this research and summarize this, uh, uh, these different meta-analyses. Uh, I think it's incredibly fascinating. So I hope you found this information helpful. Again, the takeaway here is 
If you're lean and you go low carb, uh, it's expected that your LDL cholesterol is going to increase. Whether or not that's a clinical problem or increasing your risk of cardiovascular disease remains to be seen. Uh, in my opinion, if your body fat percentage has decreased, if your blood pressure has decreased, if your waist circumference has decreased, if your HDL has increased, if your triglycerides have gone down, it's probably not a clinical concern. But again, work with your health professional, do your own research, uh, and I think that's it for today, my friends. As always, thanks for tuning all the way in. I hope you enjoyed this content. I appreciate your likes, your shares, your comments. Thanks for subscribing. We'll catch you in a future episode down the road.